Um, it's kind of a quick follow-up question. Uh, like many people here, I have a daily meditation practice. So how do, if without going to the week-long uh, visit to see you, which would be beautiful, I'm sure, what can we do throughout the day to maintain that connection? Um, so if, let me explain this a little bit, because there have been many things happening around the world. See, the English word, the English word meditation is not specific to anything. If you sit here with your eyes closed, we'll say you're meditating. You could be thinking about something, you could be chanting or contemplating something, or you could be focused on something, or you may be just zonked out, or you might have just learned the art of sleeping in vertical postures. All these things are possible. So the word, English word meditation is not specific, it's simply too general, diffused. In the Indian languages, there are specific words for all this. If you sit here with eyes closed, you can do japa, tapa, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, shunya, or vertical posture sleeping. So, uh, we can't help using that word because there is no other word in English language. So let's say meditation. Meditation essentially means, generally we assume, among all these things that I said, the in-between thing is called dhyan or dhyana or dhyanam. As you go in North India, if you go, they'll say dhyan. If you go little down, they'll say dhyana. If you go further south where we are, we will say dhyanam. Same thing. The same thing is called Chan, which became Zen. So many things happened culturally. But the important thing is, if you sit here, what is it? What is the human problem? The human problem is a very evolved body and a very evolved mind. If you had the complexity of, let's say, an earthworm or a grasshopper, you would be fine, isn't it? If you had the brain of an earthworm, wouldn't you be far more eco-friendly than all the California people who are desperately trying to be eco-friendly? So essentially, our evolution has become a problem. Our intelligence has become a problem. The complexity of our bodies have become a problem. So one simple thing is just this. If you want to know what is the nature of your mind, and what is the nature of your body, first and foremost thing is to create a little distance from that. So there is a simple process which is available on our apps and everything is free, offered to millions of people who are practicing around the world, it's called Isha Kriya. Initially you do it with a voice support, after that you can do it anywhere. It's initially twelve minute practice, but afterwards, you can do it anywhere, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, as you want. The important thing is, you bring enough awareness between what is you and what you have gathered. In the sense, what you call as my body is an accumulation, isn't it? When you were born, you were only so much. Now you became this much. How? Food that you've eaten. Food means what? The soil that we're walking upon stood up as food. We ate that up and became like this. So, body is an accumulation, is that so? Hello? Yes. Whatever you accumulate, you can say it is mine. But if it is... if you say it's me, then there's a problem, it's like this. You know this vessel? I pick this up and say, this is my vessel. You will think, oh, Sadhguru seems to be having a problem. What's his problem with his vessel? Who was taking it anyway? But after some time, then you say, okay, he's got a problem, but everybody says he's wise, let's listen some more. After some time, I say, this is me. Then you'll say, let's go home. Yes or no? Because this is a clear nut case. What you gather can be yours, cannot be you, but you're doing this every day. Food appears on your plate, you say, this is my food. 
in 24 hours you say this is me madness or no hello everything that you have in your head this is an accumulation of food this is an accumulation of impressions and experiences both are accumulated right what is accumulated can be yours can never ever be you if you create a clear distinction between what is you and what is yours all your problems are gone there's a little space between you and your body between you and your mind this is the end of suffering because you have only two kinds of suffering physical suffering mental suffering do you know any other kind of suffering hello do you know any other kind of suffering physical suffering mental suffering if there is a little distance between you and the body between you and the mind this is the end of suffering once there is no fear of suffering only and only when there is no fear of suffering will you walk full stride in your life otherwise it's always a half a step in our lives if we do not do what we cannot do there's no problem but if we do not do what we can do we are a disaster as long as the fear of suffering is there this disaster is unfolding all the time humanity has been crippled with the fear of suffering simply because what happens in their body what happens in their mind they think it is happening to them simply because i think i'm the vessel suppose you put a dent in that vessel i will suffer for the rest of my life hello please don't do it <laughs> isn't this the problem right now somebody said this oh you will suffer for the rest of your life somebody did that you will suffer for the rest of your life people are talking like this what happened 10 years ago you are still suffering what may happen day after tomorrow you are already suffering what does this mean you are not suffering life you are suffering the two most important faculties that you have a vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination both you are suffering these are the only two things which set you up you know sets you up different from the crow otherwise he can fly can you fly hello he can fly look at him he's mocking at you and going away <laughs> you cannot do nothing but you are all this simply because you have vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination but these are the two things everybody is suffering isn't it hello people are suffering their past people are suffering the future which is yet to happen what is happening right now to suffer so we usually say in india if somebody is sitting simply unhappy so are you karma because karma means this they are suffering their own memory they don't need any outside help they go on by themselves non stop anyway in the month of february 2021 we are releasing a book on karma looking at how human beings suffer the complex geometry of karma within our system see your body is shaped in a certain way because of genetic memory isn't it hello so this is also memory you can suffer that you are human being suppose you like dog food and you start eating dog food you know all this 200 million animals whatever you saying is all dog food or lion food or tiger food we are eating all right if you eat dog food after 15 days you will not become a dog you are still a human being because there is evolutionary memory in this put whatever you want this will only take human form fortunately there is no such a distinction but suppose there was man food and woman food i think it's happening in los angeles yes. <laughs> if a man eats a woman's food woman eats a man's food it will not change because there is again genetic and evolutionary memory within this so memory keeps on going there are eight different structures of memory of evolutionary memory elemental memory and uh, karmic memory conscious and conscious memories articulate and inarticulate memories they're all playing you up 
if you don't create a little distance, instead of you being able to use the memory, the memory will devour you. This is called karma. Right now, air is clean. Weather is good. Everything is nice. But you can sit here and suffer. This is karma. That means you suffer your memory. The memory, maybe conscious memory, unconscious memory, genetic memory, evolutionary memory, whatever it may be. But you're suffering your memory, which is one faculty which has made our lives complex and sophisticated, isn't it? Hello? If we didn't have such a vivid sense of memory, human beings wouldn't be any better than animals. The possibilities have come only because we can remember all this. But most human beings are being devoured by their own memory, isn't it? Imagination is just a projection of the memory again. So meditation means if you sit here, your body is here, your mind is somewhere here, you are somewhere else. Once these three identities are separated, you are able to experience the body, you are able to experience the mind, but you are not entangled with it, then this body and this mind are fantastic tools. The most fantastic tools on this planet, yes or no? But that's what we are suffering. <laughs>